Thank you, Pastor Lars. Appreciate that. We'll open your Bibles. Actually, uh, well, yeah, go ahead and open your Bibles. We're going to be a little bit all over some scripture this morning, but uh, glad to have you this morning. If we've never been introduced, my name is Nate, one of the pastors here, and welcome to Baptism Sunday. We are so, yeah, we're so excited about all that God's going to have in store for us today. Uh, but before I begin, I want to look a few more little things. We have our students in the room today. All the kids are here today. Kids, just give a little shout out. Kids, just go ahead and say, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. All right, good. Now, we're glad to have you. We're honored to have you here. Our kids team has prepared a little booklet for you to kind of walk through, to color through. So hopefully you receive that. If you did not, if your child did not get a little booklet, uh, they're going to be at the Connect Tent. And then I also want to give a couple other shout outs. Uh, my very own high school pastor, Pastor G, was playing drums today. So give a shout out for him. Where is he at? I don't know where he's at. Big, bald, beautiful Mexican guy. I love that guy. Oh, there he is. There he is. I love you, buddy. And also, so blessed today, we have Pastor uh, Steve Jolly and his wife Dawn in the house today from Santa Barbara Community Church. Where are those guys at? Pastor Steve, where is he at? Somewhere around here. I don't know where he's at. I don't see him. Oh, right there, right there. I love you, buddy. I used to have had coffee with Pastor Steve and told him about my heart to plant a church in Goleta. And he said, let's go. Let's do it. So excited for you. So thank you for that encouragement so many years ago, and I'm blessed to have you today. Well, we believe God has given us a vision to proclaim the name of Jesus, that all would look to him and be saved. We declare that Jesus is our Savior. He's our Savior. That's right, Savior, and he's our anthem, absolutely. We believe that Jesus is our Savior. Jesus is our anthem. He's the song of our heart. He's the flag that we fly. He's in charge. We're following hard after him. We desire to learn how to love and live just like Jesus. So that's what we're all about here. And today it is Baptism Sunday. And uh, if you want to follow along on some of the sermon notes today, you go to our Anthem Chapel app on the App Store, and you can kind of follow along there. And uh, we're just going to be a small little moment in God's Word thinking about what's happening today. You know, Proverbs tells us um, that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all you're getting... Get understanding. So what I want to do for the next few moments is just help us understand what's going to happen in a few moments. What, what are we participating in today? And so I wanted to say first, at, here at Anthem Chapel, we're, we want to just describe what's on display. First, we here at Anthem Chapel, we believe in something called the believer's baptism. That baptism follows belief. That if you believe Jesus died for you, was buried and rose again, offering new life for you, then today is all about that moment. We understand that there's some church traditions that baptize infants. Um, we don't see that in Scripture, and we don't participate that in as, as a church. We believe in something called the believer's baptism, that those that are being baptized today have confessed with their mouth that Jesus is Lord. They believe in the heart that God raised him from the dead. There's salvation in that. So that's kind of an overflow of that. A few verses to kind of help think about this. Acts 2 and verse 41 says this. So those who received his word, this is talking about Peter's proclamation of the gospel. For those who received his word, they were baptized. And there were added that day about 3,000 souls. We read in Acts chapter 8 and verse 12. But when they believed Philip, as he preached the good news about the kingdom of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized. And so we believe that today, b b uh, baptism follows belief. So the good news here, that you're going to witness, or these are the ones that are saying, yes, yes, I know what this is all about. Jesus is my Lord. And kind of the tagline today is, I'm all in for Jesus. I'm all in for him. But I also want to let you know, we believe Scripture clearly teaches that baptism is not necessary for salvation. That baptism is not necessary. That salvation, right, is a work of God. Scripture is very clear that we can do nothing to earn salvation, right? Our redemption is placed firmly on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Right, Romans 10, 13, right? Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So it's not necessary for salvation, but we do believe that baptism is necessary for obedience. In the farewell address of Jesus, he says this in Matthew 28, verse 19. He says, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Notice Jesus says, Go. We're to be a people of movement. Right? We're not to hi not, don't hibernate and isolate. Right? Go, go. 
Go out to the nations. Go out to the byways and the highways. Go out into the communities. Go where people on the move. Then Jesus says, then you want you to, I want you to make disciples. I want you to proclaim the name of Jesus that all would look to, to him and be saved. And then he says, I want you to baptize. I want you to baptize. So Jesus really only gives us two symbols, uh, two pictures, two what the church would call sacraments, religious practices that we are to observe. One of them is communion, which we'll be celebrating next week, communion. Communion is when Jesus, right in the upper room, he passed around a, a cup of wine, passed around a broken bread and said, this bread is my body broken for you. This cup is my blood shed for you. Do this. Do this in remembering me. So communion is something that we do as a church, remembering what Christ did upon the cross. But Christ also said, what I also want you to do is I want you to be baptized. That baptism is supposed to be a part of your Christian journey. That's what we're going to see here in just a moment. We have maybe 15, 16, maybe 20 or so signed up to be baptized this morning. It's going to be a great declaration, a public display of a private devotion. What God's done in their life. It's going to be glorious. But for a moment, I want us to think also, well, what, what, what does it mean to be baptized? Romans 6 tells us this. Romans 6 verse 3 says this. Do you not know that all of us have been baptized into Christ Jesus? We were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with, with him by baptism into death. In order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Now look at the text there on the, on the screen. Romans 6, 4 says, death and life. Death and life. See, baptism involves water. Obviously, this tub is filled with water, and we can't tell you how cold or warm it is. We'll find out shortly. <laughs> but water in Scripture is a symbol of, of three different things. Water in Scripture is, speaks of life, life. Physical life, right? We, we have to have water to live. The communities would be built around wells. That's why we're excited about partnering with the Global 6K, giving water to children that don't have clean water. That's an incredible opportunity for us to partner with that. So water is always spoken of life physically. You need water to survive. But also water speaks of life spiritually. Right? Jesus himself would say, I'm the living water. Life, uh, water speaks of spiritual blessing, spiritual abundance, spiritual healing. So water is a symbol of life, but water is also a symbol of death. Bring your mind back to Genesis. We read that there was chaos. Water covered the earth. We spoke of chaos and judgment. We think about creation. It was void. The earth was without form. There was darkness, and the Holy Spirit covered, uh, covered over the chaos of the waters. In fact, when you think about the flood, the flood was the reversal of creation, right? Water came in as a, as a judgment. So water speaks of life, but water speaks of death, chaos, and judgment. But water also, water also in, the, in the Bible, speaks of cleansing. In the New Testament, we read all the time about the priest using water to cleanse their hands, to cleanse their bodies before they entered into the temple. We think about in the temple, there was this huge bowl, this huge lavender that the priest would go to and dip their arms and dip their hands in and be purified, be cleansed before they did the work, the religious work. So Jesus comes on the scene. And he's going to combine all these three elements, death, life, and cleansing when he himself is baptized. Jesus will approach John the Baptist, who had been baptizing people in the Jordan. And John the Baptist had been preaching a three-point message over and over and over again. Repent, right? Turn around. Stop going the way you're going. Turn to God. So don't just turn around and go point in a different direction. Turn around and point, go, start going toward God. And then John the Baptist would say, be baptized. John was calling the nation of Israel to repent from their sin and be cleansed. He was inviting them to a brand new beginning. In fact, John the Baptist was baptizing in the Jordan River, the very place that Joshua would have crossed over into the new promised land. Now, when, John, uh, when Jesus gets baptized 
by John, he radically reinterprets what baptism is. When Jesus gets baptized, not only does his Father from heaven say, this is my Son, whom I love, whom I am well pleased with, Jesus also kind of points forward to his death. You see, Jesus was saying water. When, I, when Jesus was baptized, he's saying water speaks of my death. Water speaks of my death. The waters of judgment are going to come over my life, Jesus was saying. They're going to flood over me. Condemnation and chaos is going to overwhelm my life, Jesus was saying, when he was baptized. In fact, David would kind of allude to this. Psalm 69 says this, Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I seek in deep mire where there is no standing. I've come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. I am weary with my crying. My throat is dry. My eyes fail while I wait for my God. So when Jesus is baptized, when he's going under, he's saying, you know, in a sense, I'm looking forward to my, my death. Judgment and chaos and condemnation is going to flood over me. I'll be separated from my Father. But when Jesus is baptized, he also speaks about cleansing. He's saying, by my death, your sins will be forgiven. That your sin and your shame, your regret will no longer stick to you. Amen. You'll be cleansed. Not made perfect, but made perfectly clean. And water speaks of life. When Jesus is baptized under the water and he comes up, he's speaking of, he's showing us the new life that he offers us, the new day. Galatians 3 and verse 27 says this, For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Jesus was saying, when you are baptized, you now are in me, you're in me. His power is our power. His righteousness is our righteousness. His, his life is our life. There's power. There's purpose. There's purity. That's what you're going to see here in just a moment. Young and old, single, married, students, retired. As they are baptized this morning, they're saying, man, my life is now in Jesus. My life, I have been crucified with Christ. The waters of judgment Went over, or, or, or over me and over Christ. And as I come up, I'm a new creation. I have a new life and I'm cleansed. I'm pure. I'm forgiven. Incredible symbol. That's the meaning of what's going to happen. What's the message? What does this proclaim to you today? It's a message of identification. Baptism is a picture of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Again, Romans, Romans 6 and verse 5. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Look at the text there, united together. Baptism today is a message of identification. Christ, what you did for me, you died for me, you're alive for me. I, I have forgiveness, I have for, uh, redemption, I have purpose. You died my death so I could live your life. Oh, not, you did not just die for me, you died instead of me. It's a message of identification. It's a message of declaration. What's going to happen here in just a moment is these, these here today, the faith family of Anthem Chapel, they're making a moment here today. They're showing an, an inward decision has an outward display. A private devotion has a public demonstration. What's happening today is those that are here to be baptized, they're saying, hey, I'm not afraid. I want everyone to know that I am all in for Jesus. I'm telling everyone that my life, I want it to be on display. This is too good to keep to myself, right? That's why some of you are here today. Maybe some of you were invited for this moment. Grandparents, aunts and uncles, neighbors, coworkers, spouses, you're here today because that person that invited you, they want you to see what's happening to them. What they're declaring on display is a life that's been changed by the power of the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's what it's all about here today. That's what's being declared. When you see them, they've, made, they've been made alive in Jesus. I think about it this, you know, if, if I had been married for 50 years and, and you didn't know it, that'd be a shame. That'd be a shame. For one, my wife is awesome. You would never get to know her. You see, this, this wedding ring shows that I am married. But this wedding ring, it's a silicone one because, you know, it's a little bit cool. 
It shows that I'm married. Now, if I take this wedding ring off, am I still married, yes or no? Yes, of course I am. The wedding ring is just a symbol. It's just a statement to let you know I'm in a relationship. And because of this symbol, it should change the conversation, right? I could take this ring off and still be married, but you wouldn't know it. The ring changes conversations. It changes expectations. So when you're talking to my wife and you see the ring, you better step back. She's mine. It changes things. It's the same way. This morning, this moment, it changes things. It's a symbol. It's a statement. My life is no longer my own. I'm living it for Jesus Christ. I'm all in for Jesus. I've been made new. I'm alive. Jesus died for me. He was buried for me. And he rose for me. And I want every single person to know it. And so what's going to happen is we're going to have an incredible moment. We're going to have the, the worship team going to come up in just a moment. We're going to worship. We're going we're gonna, to uh, celebrate. But before we start, I want to introduce someone to you. His name is Zach Walker. And he was baptized uh, not too long ago. And I'm going to invite Zach to come up here. And he's going to share uh, his baptism moment. Welcome, Zach Walker. Yes. Thanks, Nate. <laughs> Uh, I was thinking a lot about baptism this weekend, and uh, yesterday I told my wife uh, that I kind of wish she knew me before I was baptized. Uh, and without much hesitation, she said, yeah, me too, but not really. <laughs> Oof. Um, but yeah, I remember what I was like before I gave my life to Jesus. I was really self-centered. I wasn't the greatest person. I gave all of my heart, soul, and strength to things like sports my girlfriend at the time, and my grades. I was always looking out for my own best interest. If it would benefit me, I would do it. All my self-centeredness led me to be dishonest and sneaky with my parents. I made many compromises with integrity, purity, and carried around a lot of pride. I judged those who took to the party route and I condemned them in my heart. My life revolved around whatever it was that I wanted at the time. And though I covered it up pretty well on the outside, I was pretty bad on the inside. I was living aimlessly. Um, by, by God's grace, the story doesn't end there. A uh, few guys in their 20s who genuinely loved Jesus came alongside me and started sharing the gospel with me and everything they did. I was intrigued. They'd invite me to Bible studies at 6 a.m. They'd pray for me and invite me to church with them. And the first week after my high school graduation, they took me to summer camp. By the end of that week at camp, I remember finding myself weeping in front of theater fold of other students. I admitted there that I needed to be rescued out of the way of living and that I wanted Jesus to do just that for me. I knew I wasn't living rightly before God. I was compelled by his gracious invitation to follow him. I couldn't believe Jesus would want to give his life for a guy as selfish as me. I was drawn to the idea that he could make me new. I remember that day I was baptized a few days after camp, June 7, 2015. I remember feeling the weight of my brokenness lifted as I got out of that pool and after declaring my devotion to Jesus publicly. I remember how light I felt, free from the guilt and shame I had been carrying for about 18 years. After that day, my desire to pursue my scholarship, to, to keep dating that girl and all my high school antics had faded. It felt like I received a new calling, a new identity, a new family, a new hope, and a new joy. That day marked the beginning of a transformative work that God started in my life. I'm seven years into this journey, and I feel convicted to share with you guys uh, that something definitely happened in me on that baptism day. Uh, but I still sin. There are days where I'm tempted to lust after things of this world that take my focus off of Jesus. The good news is, though, Jesus isn't looking for perfection. He's looking for sincerity. And what I want to share more than anything is, is this. Uh, I've tasted both the cup of this world and from the living water that is offered to us in Christ. And though the world tries to satisfy us, it can't and it won't. The cup that Jesus offers, though, will satisfy you and complete you in ways that are hard to describe. So guys, if you're feeling a tug in your heart today, um, if you want to experience the new life that Jesus has for you, I encourage you to respond. 
to turn the page and start afresh with the spirit of the living God in you. Amen, guys. <laughs> Man, it's excellent. Thank you for sharing, Zach. So here's what's going to happen. There's some here today that have already put their name on the roster, and they're prepared to be baptized today, and they brought a change of clothes, and they invited their family and their friends to be here today. But maybe you're here today. Maybe as we've just spent a few moments thinking about what baptism is, its meaning, its message, a public declaration of a private devotion. Maybe today you feel compelled to come forward. I believe there's nothing stopping you today. There's nothing stopping you. You don't need to go to a class. You don't need to know more about Jesus, the simple gospel. Jesus died. Jesus was buried. Jesus rose again for me. That's simple enough. If you're here today and want to be baptized, you can come forward and let the team know that today is your day. We'd be proud, we'd be honored to do that today. Maybe you're here today and you never placed saving faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want to give you an opportunity to do that as well today. But here's how the rest of our time to, will go today. The worship team's going to be worshiping. We're going to be in this nice tub, Pastor Lars and myself. And we're just going to be baptizing. And we're going to ask those that come into this little pool a question. Why is today the day that you're all in for Jesus? What makes today special? And they're going to just share that. And maybe you're going to be able to hear it. Maybe you won't. That's what's going to happen. And then Lars and I are going to say, it is our honor and our privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we're going to baptize them. And they're going to come out of the water, a new creation, on fire for Jesus. And as they exit the little pool, we're going to have our prayer team. is going to be right in that area. That prayer team is going to pray over each person. Pray for an anointing. Pray for the Spirit to speak prophetic words over their life. If you're here, a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, during the time that your family's being baptized, you come close. You come close. You be a part of this moment. We have this little camera here. Hopefully we'll be able to see some of it on the screens. But this is a faith family moment today. We're in this together. So you come forward. You celebrate what God is doing. But again, if you're here, nothing stops you today. Maybe you're here and you have given your life to Jesus, but maybe you need a moment of rededication. A moment where you say, you know what, I've been living my life for all the wrong reasons, and today is the day I want to change that. Today is the day. It is never too late to turn around. It's never too late to make a U-turn. Maybe today is your day to rededicate your life to Jesus. Hey, what a glorious day to do that on Baptism Sunday. So I'm going to pray for us. I'm going to pray with us. And we're going to get ready to celebrate all that God's doing. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the opportunity that we have as a faith family to join in the triumph of what's happening in heaven right now. I believe there's such rejoicing right now of these lives that are making the declaration, I'm all in for Jesus. It's so beautiful. Father, I just think about these here and these chairs underneath this tent right now. Maybe there's some here, Father, that you're speaking to their hearts. Maybe there's some here that need to turn around to you and rededicate their life to you. Maybe today is the day that they need to stop living for themselves and begin to live again for you. Oh, Lord, I pray you would turn their hearts around even now in this moment. Hmm. And in this holy moment right now, as every head is bowed, every eye is closed, in this moment of just spirit empowerment, Maybe you're here today and you've never placed saving faith in Jesus Christ. Maybe today is the first time you've recognized what Jesus just did for you. That there is sin in your life, things that you've said, thought, or done that displease God. And that sin, the product of that sin, is death and separation from God forever. Maybe today was the first time you've recognized that Jesus died for you. He died for you. He died for you. He died for you. There is no pit so deep that the love of God can't reach down and grab you out of. So maybe that's you here today. Covered in the chaotic waters of judgment, condemnation. Maybe today you want to give your life to Jesus. 
in this holy moment. As every head is bowed, eyes closed, I want to lead you in a prayer. The prayer is something you confess in your heart. God hears from heaven. That's you here today. I want to lead you in a prayer. Repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I admit I'm more weak and sinful than I ever believed. But through you, I'm more loved and accepted than I ever dared to hope. Thank you for paying my debt, taking my punishment, and offering me forgiveness. I turn from my sin. I turn towards you, receive you as my Savior. This is my new beginning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give a shout of praise to our Father this morning. Amen. Amen. If that was you here today, if that was you here today, placing faith in Jesus for the first time, we'd love to get to know you. Maybe you don't feel called to be baptized today. That's okay. We still get to, would love to get to know you. Put a Bible in your hand. Walk through life with you. So be sure to come to me or come to the Connect Tent if that was you here today. So what's going to happen? We're going to worship we're going to get the, the team. If you're being baptized today, it's your time to go get ready. I'm going to go change myself real quick, and uh, we'll begin to baptize. Does that sound good, fam faith family? Amen. Amen. Let's do it.
Jesus Christ, high King of heaven, my King forever. And all praise to the Lord most high. And all praise to the one who saved my life. All praise to Jesus Christ, high King of heaven, my King forever. That was Kara that just got baptized, and that was Claire before. Oh, this is Ty and your son, and Dustin. Awesome. So exciting. This is my daughter Ava. My daughter Ava is being baptized. This is Maddie Myers. i 
salvation comes my way. When I cannot stand or fall on you, because Jesus, you're my hope and stay. Maddie's sister, Misty, Mitzi, and Keith's coming in. Oh, this is Burke. Burke's birthday is today also. 11 years old today, Burke. Yes. You know what? Since it's kind of quiet, I'm going to put you on the spot, Burke. Why is today the day for you to be baptized? Um, I just want to give my life to Jesus. Oh, hey, man. Hey, man. That's incredible. This is Isaiah Barajas. This is Hudson. We have Sabine, Sabine up next.
is uh, Anderson, Anderson. We got Big Denny up next. We got a father son combo, John and Taylor. Precious blood of Jesus Christ. 
behind your regrets and mistakes. And come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. Jesus is calling. And I'll come to the altar. No, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was. We got Big Luke Edwards. The precious blood. Oh, come to the altar. No, come to the altar. Zoe.
So don't let me waste a trial. Don't let me miss the chance to face. Cause when I see your face, I wish I'd given more away. So don't let me waste a trial. Don't let me miss the chance to Can we give a shout of praise to those who got baptized today? What a joyous day. Amen. Amen. I'm going to have, uh, you know, I'm going to have, I'm going to have Zach Walker. Would you mind praying over all these today that got baptized? Would you mind praying for them? Awesome, Zach. We'll have Zach pray over our, our day today. Awesome. Well, Jesus, we're just so honored to be here with you, Lord. Uh, in the presence of your mighty name, God, we just say thank you for all the lives today that came before you, humbled themselves so that you could bring forth new life in them. We're so grateful to be part of this day, God. We give you the glory, and we just say, Lord, would you send your spirit in us as we leave this place? We pray for transformation and new life to follow us from this day. We just thank you, God, for all you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 What a blessing. Hey, we'd love to get a photo. If you were baptized today, maybe come to the stage. We'll get a photo of all you guys. Thank you, family, for being here, celebrating with us on this day. Hey, just keep coming back. We'll see you next week. God bless you guys. Yeah, we'll try to get a photo if we can. If you were baptized, can we get a photo of you guys? Maybe come. Uh, come. Maybe. Where should they go? How about right there? I guess that thing. How about right there? On the stage. Come to the stage if you were baptized. Come to the stage if you were baptized. We want to get a picture.